Today we're going to talk about sheets, single sheets of paper that can go for a small fortune selling online. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to talk about sheets of paper that sell for a small fortune online. You can sell them on many different sites. We're going to specifically talk about letterheads today. Something that can show up pretty much anywhere, just in a big bunch of paper or envelopes or anything along that line. I find them everywhere, and I do mean everywhere. Everywhere I have sourced, including thrift stores, I have run across some of these in the past. Let's hop over right now and show you exactly what we're talking about. So with letterheads, the age is not necessarily a factor. Many different things come into play with a letterhead. It doesn't have to have a note on it. We're just talking about the letterhead itself are collected for various different groups and categories. Letterheads on their own are a huge area all in on themselves. If they have content on it, it's even better. But the content alone is not the biggest issue. If the content was on just a regular sheet of paper without the letterhead, it would not have sold for as much as they do. Here's a Union Pacific Railroad from 1868. Nothing super, super fancy. It's where it's from. It's the date on this specific one. Each one has a different reason why they are collected, why they carry a value. But there are immense amount of all of these types of letterheads available. Most companies printed these by the thousands. And I do mean the thousands. Some companies later on printed tens of thousands of letterheads for all different types of things. Most people don't realize that just an average letter for some of these can carry some insane amounts of value. This one sold for $535. This one sold for $535. This one has a combination of reasons on why it's key, why this specific one went for so much money. It's not even a signature on this one that's the deal. It's the package on this one. Now here's an interesting one. This is from 1900. It's got a Clara Barton signature on it. Now, had she not signed it, this still would have had some value just because of the age of the era as well. But her signature on here adds to that. Her signature on its own may not have went for anywhere near this amount. But on a letterhead from the organization she found, that actually adds an immense value to it. You can see the price, $700 on this one. Now, here's an interesting one from 1851, and this is from Richmond, Virginia. It would probably be a city letterhead. It's got the James River in it. Contents are always great as well, as I said, but the letterhead on some of these is just so scarce, you won't run across it very often. But again, this is from a city. They made thousands of these letterheads. They're in attics and garages and basements and barns all over the place. I buy big bulk lots of paper at auctions, local live ones and things along that line. And many times one single sheet of paper can pay for my entire purchase for everything I got at some of these auctions. These are immense items to get if you know what you're doing and spend the time to research these properly. And as you can see, this one went for $365. Now here's an 1872 Lehigh Valley Railroad Company letterhead. Now, rarity is an issue with some of these. Some of these, you just don't find many of them, even if they had thousands of them printed. A lot of these would go to businesses, and the businesses just discard them at the end of the year or however long they may save them for. You can see the price. This one went for almost $300. Content, again, can add to it. But as I said, it's a combination, the age, the content, a possible signature. Or even in some cases, it's harder to get one that has nothing filled out on it than anything else. So a blank, unfilled out letterhead may go for a fortune when a filled out one with just some common signature may not be worth much at all. Now here's a nice, interesting one from 1878, American Optical Company. Now I have glasses by this company. This company has been around for a very long time. A lot of these sorts of collectibles are only collected by certain groups of people. This one would be optometrists and people who love collectibles tied to glassware and things like that, which I do. $300 basically on this one here. Content-wise, there are collectors for almost any type of letterhead you could imagine, whether it's a hotel or a theme park, railroads, just on and on and on. There's just so many areas of letterheads. Most companies at one point 
printed letterheads and printed them in quantity. So some of these may not be super rare, but most people don't think to look for these. They don't pull them out. They don't research them. They just think it's a piece of paper. I've even seen people buy letters with the stamped envelopes just to get the envelope and not mess with what's inside of it and then pass up on some really good items because of that. Really fine example here. We search these out wherever we go. I have found hundreds and hundreds of these, real good ones even. This area just depends on how much you want to dig in, how much time you want to spend researching and understanding which ones are the best ones to get. Once you figure that out, you're in the gold. You're in gravy with this sort of item. Now, here's an early Barton whiskey. Now, this is something that you will find. I have labels from the same company. Any of these sell for some decent money. Almost $300, as you can see. Lexington, Kentucky piece. This is a copy. This is from a carbon, and as you can see, it is written in blue. So nothing on here was typed directly onto this letterhead. This is probably like a business copy that they would keep. Most companies kept a copy of this sort of thing in the typing age so that they would have proof of what was sent out. So you will find originals, and you will find these copies in basically a carbon style printing. So don't pass those up either. The letterhead is what matters. It doesn't matter on how it's printed on the bottom for most parts, unless it's damaged or it's just something awful written on the bottom or something. But in most cases, I don't pay attention to that part of it at all. Sometimes you might see some good content even as a carbon. Now here's an interesting one from 1862. This is the Colt Firearms Company. You can see it only went for 250 bucks. You would think it would go for more because of the company itself, but there's a lot of Colt. There was a lot of Colt collectors back then. People kept the paperwork with their guns and things like that. So a lot of these are around there. They had a contract with the US government. So there was tons of correspondence going back and forth. Hence the value isn't as much as some of the other letterheads. So that's a misconception some people make. Wow, it's Civil War. It's a gun. They're going to think it's worth a fortune. But you will see that that is not always the case. There's far more to this than just saying, hey, it's a gun or it's something else collectible in another category. Now, that does come into play because military collectors will probably be the only ones buying this. So you have to judge the value on these by the category they would fit into. A hotel would be more like a tourist collectible item. Railroad would be transportation. Civil War letter like this would be military, obviously, from the Civil War. So it does limit the amount of people that may be interested in it, but they pay high dollar for a lot of these. Either way, 250 bucks for something like this is a phenomenally good price for a single sheet of paper. Most of these are standard, close to 8.5 by 11 or somewhere in that range. Some are much smaller, but there was a standard size for most of these, just as there is today. Now, here's a very interesting one from Joe Bidenharn. This is from the Coca-Cola Company. He started the bottling, basically, of these. The first original bottles were from one of these southern companies. These are very scarce items. You can see the price up there. This dates to the early age, the founding from the 19th century of the Coca-Cola. That name can be found in the very first receipts and things from the start of the Coke as well. So that's why this one's tied in here. It's a little later. You can see the price comparing it to the Colt item from 1862. The prices are right there. So... Again, it's not the age. It's not even the graphics on them to some extent. It's what it is. You can find some that only have four words for the name of the company at the top of the letter, and those can go for a ton of money, 10 times what this could go for in some cases. It just depends on the letterhead itself. Here's a newer one, 1949, Frank Costello. Now, he was a gangster. You can look this up. Some of the interesting facts or ways to judge the value on these are the location or the name of the company. This is 79 Wall Street. That's the name of this gentleman's company, this gangster, this mobster's company. He's only signed it with the first name. Whether this be a copy or not, this is something fairly scarce. It's got the correct name, the correct date, the correct everything to tie it to this person. And again, the value-wise is right up there, the 250 mark. So it just depends on what it is. It doesn't even have to be signed. If this wasn't signed, and there are some up on eBay right now that sold that weren't signed, they still go close to this price either way. So I don't 
worry at all when I'm buying these, whether there's a signature or not a signature. Again, I am just looking at the letterhead itself, the contents of the letterhead. These are something you can research. Terapeak is just fine to research a large chunk of these. You will have to search off-site, off-platform to find many of the other ones. In some cases, WorthPoint may be the only source to find it if you don't know how to dig in. Now, there's Reddits for these. There's boards and things like that as well, so you don't necessarily necessarily have to pay for it. But if you want to save the time or you don't know how to figure out who collects these and where to find prices at, Worth Point can be okay. But again, Terapeak should give you most of what you need to know when you're researching these. Now, looking at this, if you didn't know who this person was, you'd have just passed this right by. I almost guarantee most everybody would have done that because it just looks like a basic business letter. I look through these sorts of things all the time. You know, taking history classes and researching stuff and watching documentaries and things like that too, though those seem like they may not give you anything. Many times you might glean just a name or a hint of information. There's actually a documentary that touches on Frank Costello online right now. There's one on Amazon and there's another one I do believe still up on Netflix. So these names show up in things like that. These are real people. Knowing different oddball things like that can really help you out in this sort of thing. Again, most people would have walked right by this. This would have been folded, tri-folded probably, may have been in an envelope, who knows. Either way, to most people, it's just a sheet of paper. Now here's an interesting one for fuses, blasting caps, dynamite, explosive ignition devices here. It's a mining tied piece. This goes back to mining. Now most mining items go for good money, especially like a gold mine, copper mines, silver mines. So this is a good example, 245 bucks. Most advertising like this usually is worth something. Now, another thing to think about when you're looking at these letterheads, most of these letterheads, you can find an envelope with part of that design, or even in some cases, all of the design as a cachet on the envelope. You can also find business checks with the same basic design as the letterheads. You can also find ledger books with the same basic design as the letterheads. Those all could carry some value. Again, to most people, these are just sheets of paper. It takes the right person to pull the right ones of these out and understand why there's a value in these. This is an area I love. I mess with paper all the time. Paper is my thing. We do FBA. We do all of that sort of thing as well. We're on multiple platforms. This is what I really love the most, though. Now, here's an interesting one from 1882. This is from the Ashley House. This would be like a hotel, and this is a guest ledger site sign-in page. Now, you can get away with calling this a letterhead because it does have the basic title of the location itself on it. Letterhead itself is basically the top, the design at the top. I would call this a ledger page more than anything else. Register is fine because, again, it would be a guest register book that this came out of. In many cases, a lot of these sorts of items, like these ledger pages or register pages, will come in a book, and you may be lucky and pick up a whole book of just a bunch of signatures that may not look like anything to most people, but you can tear out each individual page and sell them individually. This one went for $200. This 100% came in a register, a book, with multiple pages in it. So if they all sold for this, range. Some of these books I've run across had 200 plus pages in it, and we were able to sell many of them each. Now, at some point, if you have a big book of these, you're going to run out of people that want them. So there's only so many of this sort of thing that you can sell. There is a limited, I guess, audience for this sort of thing. How big each audience is really kind of depends. Transportation and things like that and mining have a huge audience, as do soda shop collectibles and things along that line. Not as much for Ashley House, I would say, because it's a small regional area that's tied to it. But again, a small regional one may not have as many printed, so they may be much scarcer than some other items. Now, there are some books and some collector's guides and things like that for some of these as well. You have to dig into them. Most of the price guides like this for this sort of item, they're not going to be viable for current prices of selling prices on these, but they will be good for identification. But again, there's hundreds of thousands of different types of letterheads, maybe millions upon millions. Probably most every company had a letterhead at some point. We have letterheads ourselves. 
So, you know, the quantity of these things that are out there is just massive. There's millions of these floating around in people's attics right this very second. You find the right one, you might have $200 for a single sheet of paper. Now, here's another example, basically a hotel, 1879 Allen House. And obviously, you can see the price, almost $200. So most of these are fairly scarce, or I should say people don't list a lot of these items many people don't realize the value good thing on these sorts of items many people just don't realize the value in these when they're outsourcing i see people walk by these all the time when i'm at an estate sale especially even at an auction where i'm buying just a big bulk lot of hundreds of sheets of paper there'll be specific letterheads in there that I may be looking for and buying that huge lot for one or two letterheads and the rest is just gravy. Excellent item here, almost $200 on this one. Now here's one from my area, East Liverpool, Ohio. It's West End Pottery Company. There are a ton of well-known potters that are from that area. I think it's the clay why there's so many potters in this area. There's a river that runs through there, and it was an easy way to transport. Railroad lines were right there as well. Basically $200 on this one. It's a very nice letterhead, to say the least. Now, a lot of these are engraved as well. You can feel it on the top. Now, here's an interesting one from Boston, 1869. Metropolitan Steamship Company. This is the Neptune Steamers. Now, that is a steamer line, not a specific named steamer. Now, you can find some of these letterheads, like from a captain of a steamer or of a ship, and some of those can go for some phenomenal money. There's letterheads from U.S. Navy personnel, Army officers, and things like that as well, with their name at the top of the letterhead. Those go all the way back to the Revolutionary War era in some cases. Nice example here, almost $200 as well. Steamship company lines and stuff like this, regardless go for some good money. And just like the register we showed you just a few moments ago, this probably came out of a book. You can see some hole punches on the side. So whoever got this may have gotten a booklet of these. I have found booklets from transportation as well, just like this. Maybe not quite the same thing or age, but they're still very good items to get. People will just split these up just like this. If I get a book of something like this, it's going to be split up because 99% of the time, it will be worth far more as an individual sheet than it would be as a book. Somebody else who buys the book from you is just going to rip it up and then make more money off of you. So I never, ever sell them as a book unless obviously there is no value there. Now, here's an interesting one. Liquor and wine and things like that, as you saw, do go for some good money. Almost $200. Stonehill wine company u.s winemakers from back in the day are highly collected because there's not a lot of them around there's not a lot of paper material who knows how big they were at the point anyway but this is just a fine example of something like that it's fairly new 1914 still almost 200 dollars here's another interesting alcohol related one walter brewing beer beer ones go for some good money it's colored it's got nice graphics just a fine example i love letterheads i've got a couple that I will be showing you as well from the Knights Templar that are just phenomenal pieces of letterhead art. This is an area that I do get into. You're going to see some of the fine quality ones that I have going up very soon. We're pulling out some Knights Templar to start off our first runs on some of the letterheads that we have in our assortment. Now here's a real interesting early one. This is the Bartlett Lamp Manufacturing Company. Now I've seen Bartlett lamps before. Now sometimes you'll see Bartlett written on the turning switch even into say the 20th century. This is from 1891. Nice early example. Most people who are into vintage and collectible lamps will know who this is. 130 bucks. It's more hardware. A lot of people may not realize the value on something like this. This is almost like a Victorian trade card advertisement to some extent, or like a print ad, but this is a specific piece meant just to send out either as a letter or in this case, like an invoice of some sort. The letterhead can be on many different items, as I said, like the checks, envelopes and things along that line. Invoices and registry pages and all of that still have that letterhead on the top. Real good example here. And lastly, this is from the RMS Lusitania. Now, I've had many pieces from this ship. This ship was sunk by a German torpedo just prior to us entering World War I. This is a very fine example, $102. Now, you can find that same imagery on the top of menus from the ship, 
all kinds of things, passenger lists and cards as well. There's many different things that will have something similar to this. This is an official letterhead though, on paper, ready to go. Now these would have been available on the cabins to the passengers on the line, as well as some of the staff would have been able to get these. Now the ship was sunk, so there'd be less of these available than many of the other ships. So, And it was sunk fairly early in its lifetime. But that's what I have for you today. Hopefully that opens your eyes to the value on single sheets of paper that can sell for some phenomenal prices. Well, there you are. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. girl and golden intrigue fashions each sold separately angel this is charlie your assignment get back the gold charlie's angels dolls sabrina chris and kelly and fashions each sold separately from hasbro